Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phone Bunch, and today we are benchmarking the Motorola Moto E available for rupees 699. Let's have a look at the hardware specs. You can see the model number, it's XT1022, running Android 4.4.2 KitKat, and you have 540 by 960 pixels QHD display. Some space is taken by the bottom buttons. You have an ARMv7 based Snapdragon 200 dual core processor, clocked at 1.2 GHz, Adreno 302 GPU. It says 305 because the board is compatible with that. OpenGL ES 3.0 support. You have 915 MB of RAM out of 1 GB that's available to system. 2.2 GB of internal storage which is expandable. Then you have 5 megapixel camera at the back and there is no flash and you don't have a front facing camera either. Coming to battery you have a 1980 mAh lithium ion battery that's non removable it's inbuilt. Then you have your accelerometer, proximity sensor and light sensors, all of which are working fine. Now let's start with the benchmarks. First one we are going to run is Antutu. We have fast forwarded all the benchmarks to get to the results quickly. So scores have now loaded up. Let's have a look. We got 12504 on Antutu, which is a very good score for Snapdragon 200. It's higher than the Xperia even, but below than the Iris 406Q, which uses a quad core Snapdragon 200. It's higher than the Zolo A510s as well. Now we are running the Quadrant Benchmark. It has been fast forwarded as well. Let's submit the score to get a comparison chart going. So we got a score of 5324 which is again similar to the Xperia Even Dual which costs quite a lot higher than this phone. And definitely lower than the Iris 406Q. Now we are running Nina Mark II. It will test the graphics. So we got 49.8 FPS which is again a bit low but even then we believe high-end games should be easily playable on this phone too. Now we are running the HTML5 chapter of Velomo. It will test Sun Spider as well as V8 benchmark suit. This has been fast forward as well. It will give us a consolidated score. So we got a score of 1193 but it actually doesn't represent the phone's actual performance since the core of Velomo has not yet been optimized for Android KitKat. Now we are running the metal chapter of Velomo got a score of 483 which is higher than both the Xperia even as well as the Lava Iris 406Q and you can see it's just below the Samsung Galaxy S3 which too features a quad core processor. Very good scores there. Now we are running the Linpack single thread test. We got a score of 73.99. Now let's run the multi thread test. So we got 142.81 which is again a very good score and that's pretty much in realm with other phones based on the Snapdragon 200 dual core processor. Now we are doing the multi touch test. You can see I have 4 fingers all are detected, 5 fingers that is also detected, 6 fingers so only 5 are detected so it's a 5 point multi touch display which is absolutely superb at this price point. Even in terms of general performance there are no issues. The display performs brilliantly. There is no ghosting, no freezing. And the touch response is spot on. You can see the display has excellent viewing angles and moreover the build of the device is truly solid which is unheard of in this particular segment. The phone feels great to hold in the hand, comes with Gorilla Glass 3 protection, a water resistant coating as well. All in all it's an extremely good package with good performance. Well folks that was the benchmarking review of the Moto E. You can watch its unboxing from right here as well as the benchmarks of the Xperia Even Dual and the Lava Iris 406Q. If you have any queries just hit us in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching and have a great day.